play for the art club. Um, I thought I could talk about uh, choosing colors in art, and that's because I recently had to choose some colors for one project we're working on. Um, and um, that led me to going around. And for today, for the art club, I did a bit of um, um, going back in time and trying to remember like all the different things related to colors um, that um, use, um, or, I mean, maybe not all of them, but, but quite a bit of them. So I think you should be able to see, sorry. Now you can see, sorry, the, the Google lock. Um, uh, and so I kept at, I initially was only going to talk about two packages, Palatier and Colorblind R, but then I started to add quite a few of them to the list. Um, and so we go way back in time. Um, in the 20, 2012 to 2013 academic year, um, my classmates, Aaron Fisher and Prasad Patil, um, they were the organizers of the computing club at the Hopkins by, by Statistics Department. And among the, the presentations, there was a, this was the second time that uh, Bruce uh, Swihart uh, presented um, about colors. Um, and it was a very uh, popular presentation, I, I think the year before it. Um, and so this was the first time I actually saw a paper talking about colors. Um, and so <clears throat> really here, Bruce was talking about the color space package. Um, and so this color space package, uh, which I have a link over here, um, um, uh, it's from a while back. Um, and it has two vignettes in particular. Um, and one of them is like, the overall idea of it. So that's the one I'll, I'll open here. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, this package talks about three different properties of colors, hue, chroma, and lumina, luminance. Um, and how like um, different colors they might actually have the same hue, but different luminance or like things like that. Um, um, and so they have a lot of different color palettes that they suggest should work because they've um, um, they've checked them to follow the properties that they argue uh, a color palette should have, right? Um, and so there's a, a lot of nice color options here um, that um, you could use. You can use them with base graphics, like um, like they do over here, where um, um, you have a little vector Q4 that was generated earlier right? with your vector of colors. It really just corresponds to choosing like um, hex uh, values for colors. And so it becomes like a little like character vector. And that's the one you can pass to the call argument uh, of the plot of the base R plot function, how you can use them. And so uh, you'll notice here, like all of them are supposed to have the same hue, if I remember correctly. Um, so none of them is like more intense looking than the other color, right? Um, so that's just one example. You can also use it with ggplot2 because they've added like this scale field discrete qualitative function and like a few other scale functions um, or scale, um, yeah. They've added scale like uh, underscore like uh, fill color um, or color with a, a U and then the data type either discrete or continuous. And they've had like the different versions of qualitative sequential diversion or diversion X, right? So they have a lot of options here. You can use out of the box type of thing. 
Um, so you can use them with ggplot too, right? Uh, without having to do a lot of extra work, right? Um, um, and so, uh, um, here I talk about how um, there's this HCLL spectrum on the x-axis, but then there's this ratio of luminance against chroma, um, and how like these colors can can look at right. So I don't remember all the details of the the science behind the colors, um, but in particular they talk. This package is linked to a paper from two thousand and nine, I think. Um, um, yeah, July two thousand and nine. Um, um, so this is the paper where they actually show the the math formulas for like um, the different properties of colors. Um, and I I remember that Bruce used to explain to us all all the math formulas. Um, 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 but like if you ask me now, I don't I don't fully remember them, right? Um, um, but in any case here, like it was a, a paper that tried to um, find like good properties of colors um, and then find actual colors that, that satisfy those properties, right? Um, so, um, you know, you might wanna check it a bit later, right? Um, and so you could argue this is one hand of the, um, of um, how to choose colors, like a more scientific, um, like a scientific approach, a math approach. Um, a lot of times people choose colors by just looking at like famous pieces of art and then finding like colors that are highly uh, used in those pieces of art. Um, and then at that point, you're like basically like relying on the artist, right? Who chose those colors to, um, and um, and so you, so you find a lot of art packages that uh, that have like colors based on these um, fancy pieces of art, right? I mean, excellent pieces of art. Sorry. Next comes polychrome, um, and so polychrome, I didn't actually hear about it directly. I first uh, read about it. Um, um, as part of the blog for new updates to R. Um, so this was published in, you can't see much there, but published in 2019. Um, and this was a big announcement because they were saying like, we are going to change the default colors of base R. Um, and that was pretty exciting because like the default colors of base R had been like pretty terrible for a while. Uh, um, now, um, um, you can kind of see the default colors here on the top and the new ones they chose below. And so they're still like along the same line. Uh, like you have a, a red, a green, a blue, uh, a light blue, but here they, they chose them to be, um, to have the same like luminance, um, and so like some of the ones on before, like um, some of them have more luminance than others, right? Um, and so they are like, uh, the full blog post goes into how they chose this new color palette, right? Um, and at some point they talk about uh, the polychrome package. Um, and this is where like I first read about it. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, because this color polychrome package has a palette that allows you to have up to 36 colors. And I thought that was like, um, that's exactly like the situation where I was because I needed to find a palette that would allow me to have 28 distinct colors for what I was um, plotting at the time. Um, so that's how I got into, into polychrome. And so if we look at polychrome itself, um, um, it has, a few vignettes. Right now, the one I want to highlight is the one called Polychrome um, over here. And so this is like the overview of it, right? So you just 
loaded, it has a few different functions for different palettes. So in the VN, they talk about the Kali.colors function. I actually use a lot of the one, I, um, I forget the name, I, th I think it's like alphabet N36 uh, or something like that. Um, I use the one that, that has an N36 on the name. Um, but yeah, you get all these different palettes. Um, but then the VN also talks about like other functions that I actually don't use that much, but like, um, um, you can like this function here, for example, swatch hue orders the colors by by hue. You have another one to order them by luminance. Um, I put them in random order. Um, but like um, luminance and hue, right? These are some of the com concepts that were mentioned as some of the three, one two of the three pillars for colors in that 2009 paper, right? Um, 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 and yeah, so they, they have some, some of these, um, functions such that you can find like, um, like a bunch of different colors that like you can actually distinguish in a scatter plot type of thing. Um, um, and so, um, uh, what else you can do? Oh yeah. They also have this function, sorry, the, the color space package. Which is, the, which is the one from that 2009 paper, has this function desaturate, which makes like all the colors just um, in, in, turns them into gray, right? Um, and that's because some people might not be able to see much the colors, but they can see like the luminance of the colors. So you might want your colors not only to be distinguishable by, um, by the majority of the population, but also to be distinguishable by by those that um, um, basically can only see luminance, right? Um, um, so that I thought was quite interesting. And so they have a bunch of other vignettes um, and like, I'll come back to, to them in a little bit. Uh, sorry, I'll come back to one of them later. Uh, I'll open the, this one first, which is about using polychrome with ggplot2 uh, because a lot of times we're using ggplot2. So you basically, um, Unlike the color space package, you have to create your um, your vector of colors, which um, here they use with this create palette function. Um, and once you have that uh, vector of colors that you know you like, um, um, if you want to use it now, you will use on ggplot2 the scale color manual function um, and manually pass. The, um, the colors that you want, right? Now, this is actually what I do a lot on special IBD. I use the scale color manual function with the values. And this vector, which in this case is the name of the object is called P40, um, can be actually a name character vector. And if you do that, then, then like, let's say you have um, um, layer one, layer two, layer three, right? As your options. Then you can say like the name of the of the first element is layer one. Then the value of it is the actual color, right? And so that's how you can control how you map uh, colors to to groups if you want. Um, um, and so it doesn't really provide extra support for ggplot2. This is just like an example of how you can use the existing ggplot2 functions um, to use the polychrome colors. <clears throat> Um, at the same time, when I was working on this um, um, project um, where I needed the 36 colors, um, um, I knew about the we read this light um, um, colors because you, they are you can actually use them in ggplot2 uh, like natively, um, and so this is a. Uh, uh, they have a set of different colors. The very, the most famous one, thanks to ggplot2, is the actual we read this one, which is this one that goes from dark blue up to um, yellow, and it's supposed to be like um, um, a color friendly, um, color blind friendly um, palette, and they have different options of it, uh, uh, like this one called magma or inferno plasma. There are a lot. There are like 
uh, all of those use the same colors, just in different orders type of thing, right? Um, um, of how, um, yeah, how, how they're ordered. So I, I knew about that package. Um, so um, it's quite uh, nice if you want to have like a sequential um, color palette. Um, I think uh, you can use them with ggplot2 directly. Um, and in particular, Viridis Lite is part of Viridis. I mean, it's a sub, like a smaller package of Viridis. Um, the website even looks the same at the beginning, but it's just that like now you actually have a vignette over here. And this one talks a lot about like the design of these colors, um, how here they have like this uh, quite interesting like figure and it's one where they can exemplify, can you see the colors or not, right? Can you see these different patterns, right? Um, and so later on, they talk about how they're the different color palettes, right? Like rainbow heat, the ggplot2 default, and some other options, how they actually look to people that have different um, color blindnesses, um, various forms of it. One of them is this, Though I don't know how to pronounce this correctly, um, the green blind version, um, the Theranopia. Um, and so you can see like the default rainbow one, you start to have a bunch of colors you're not able to distinguish. Whereas with Viridis or Magma, you're able to distinguish the colors across the whole like gradient, right? Um, so this is, I mean, the, the yellow to blue version that uh, we see, right, um, um, turns into this other version for the people that have that particular uh, color blindness. Um, and there's there's actually different versions. There's the green blind, the red blind, protanopia, <coughs> and the blue blind, tritanopia. So there's actually different uh, types of color blindness. Um, and so in all of them, we read this magma um, still work, right? Um, um, and even if you look at it desaturated, it also, it also gives you colors you can see. Um, if you, um, if, um, yeah, that's um, uh, your type of color blindness, right? Um, or you need to print, the colors in black and white, right? Um, um, so um, they're very well designed, right? The Viridis um, uh, color scales and like um, I've I use them now quite a bit on like special IBD uh, because um, um, yeah, I like I like uh, providing people the option to use a lot of these ones, right? to see um, their data. Um, um, and like now the user can choose, right? Um, and so that leads me to this discussion of uh, related to one bioconductor conference, which then is, uh, um, uh, led to the creation of a Slack channel called Accessible Biz. Um, uh, and so this Slack channel, it's from 2020, and like we were discussing several things, um, and I actually highlighted here that my, I think one option to help people is to actually provide interactive visualizations, so it's just such that like, people can choose like different options for for looking at the plots, right? Um, instead of just uh, providing like static versions. Um, so um, uh, from that channel. Um, um, one of the con main contributors of that channel is the authors of um, DitoSeq, which is this biconductor package um, that was basically released in 2020. Um, um, and um, it, it has its own uh, paper too that you could look at. Um, but if we look at the vignette, this package tries to um, uh, basically make it easy for people to that are working with like single cell data 
to make plots that are already colorblind friendly, right? So a lot of times you might need to like uh, do like a few extra lines of code um, um, uh, if you want to make your colors colorblind friendly. And this is, speaks about the power of default, right? For like, um, it's very, uh, going against the default um, creates a bit of a barrier, right? Um, and so um, they have a lot of different functions here. Um, 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 uh, for plotting. And so we're just gonna, we're, I'm not gonna look at the code, we're just gonna look at some plots. So for example, here, like um, a few of you might use, have used the dim plot function. And now this is just the same, but with the keyword, um, the prefix Dito added to it before. And it has a lot of the same arguments, but now the default colors are actually like colorblind friendly colors. So you don't even need to think about choosing colors. Um, 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 so they have a you know bar plots, um, these violin plots. Um, um, you can make a um, like you know your PCA plot. Um, um, here more examples of so bar plots. You can use like you can make a heat map um, for like you're already annotating things. And this is for example, I don't know if you've used the P, P heat map package before. But if you want to change the colors, it's actually uh, not, it takes some effort. It takes like maybe, uh, I don't know, between five and 10 lines of code. So it's a little bit more, I mean, it's not like an insurmountable amount of work, but it does take a bit of work. If you want to change the colors. Um, but here the, the default ones are really colorblind friendly. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, we have this other one, um, which, uh, you know, for PCs. Um, so a lot of you might recognize some of these plots, right? Like you can do this scatter plot, et cetera. Um, that one, I guess, wasn't that interesting. There's not a lot of colors. Um, you can do these hex bands. Um, so you can do a lot of different things with it. Um, um, and so I, when there's a package about like colors and plots, a lot of times you might just want to like scheme through them and find the plot that you need type of thing. And so here there's more examples with the, the heat map and uh, something that they talk about is you can make it into, um, um, if you use this complex equals true argument, you can make it into a complex heat map instead of a P heat map. Um, so depending on what package you want to use, this DDO heat map function already provides a wrapper for both of them. Um, so you might be interested in doing this because um, at that point, maybe you don't need to learn a lot of the different syntaxes for, for the two heat map packages. Um, 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 uh, well, I don't know, maybe you will, you will need to like dive into the, the help files for the original heat map functions, but um, um yeah like um uh they just have a lot of different examples um um uh, so it's a pretty nice uh, visualization package i remember seeing around but i don't i don't um i don't remember the package name that had it but there was uh, one um visualization uh, package that like not only use like colorblind friendly colors, but also use like different shapes. And sometimes like, like let's say this a, uh, beta one, it could have like two slashes, uh, two diagonal slashes that way, like the delta could be a little cross. So you use also different shapes um, to make it easier to visualize um, when you have a visual impairment, right? Um, but I, rem I don't remember what was the package and function that did that? Um, and so, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of different options of what you can do. Um, and um, one thing, um, um, but like, uh, 
like um like a lot of times i guess what i end up using is this um uh, the cookbook for r um version one book it has a little chapter here about um about colors and i like to use this image quite a bit this shows the r color brewer um colors so a lot of times i've used these ones but uh, you could argue that like uh uh you know polychrome color space these other packages are uh provide maybe better color palettes to use instead of the R color brewer ones. Because uh, I don't remember if all of the R color brewer ones are like set to the same like hue or things like that, right? Um, I think some of them are, uh, but I don't remember if all of them. Um, 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 and so at times like I'll Google around and um, I remember seeing something on Twitter uh, about a package that was like collecting all the color palettes around. And then, so I tried Googling for that. And so that led me to, uh, to this repository called our color dash palettes from ML. Um, um, and I was like, okay, I think this is it. It's highly popular. You can see it like has a ton of stars, right? Almost a thousand stars. Um, and, um, Inside of it, it tells you like, hey, a lot of this is being housed under the Palettier package, and you can find the development version over here, right? Um, um, so if we open that link, that leads us, that leads us to the GitHub for this Palettier package. Um, and so both of the readmes, you could say, are worth like checking. Um, um, <clears throat> and so, the idea of Palettier is that it's going to give you discrete and continuous um, color scales, and it just tries to collect all the ones that they that they found, um, and so they have like, you know, the various ones. They have like some from this GR devices package, um, um, and so they have a, they use um, vignettes and things like that from a ton of packages. Like here's a lot of the list. They use Polychrome, for example. Um, our Skittle Brewer, which is a, this was a package from um, a PSG classmate of mine. Um, well, she was um, one year above me. Um, but yeah, she, she made like this color uh, palette because she really liked Skittles, for example. And so she chose to, <laughs> she chose colors that really looked like the Skittles, right? Um, 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 and so, yeah, like you can see Veritas. You can see like this Wes Anderson palette, which is like uh, Karthik from uh, our open side. He really likes the Wes Anderson movies. So he made a color palette based on, <laughs> on those movies. Um, so you find a lot of these, um, you know, packages from a, a bunch of different uh, palettes, like this NBA one. <laughs> uh, um, I forget if there's a PV. No. Yeah. So there's a lot of, a lot of them. Um, um, so it's like, yeah, a, a home for almost all, right? Um, um, and so if I go back to the art color palettes, uh, the very first thing you'll see this interactive color picker. So let me open that. So that's what I used recently because um, uh, it says that this website is still under development, right? Um, uh, but if I go to the discrete color palettes, um, just shows you to them, all of them over here. Um, and so you can browse and find something you like. You can subset for something that you're interested in. So maybe you want something that is sequential, let's say, right? Um, and so let's say you like one. So here I'm gonna click on this top left. Then it shows you over here the code that you need to actually use that palette. So this one is the AW tool. So I guess it's for maybe Amazon uh, tools palette that they use. Uh, maybe I click over here. This comes from the Beyonce package. Um, uh, um, this one also comes from the Beyonce package, right? This one comes from the A-Tools G palette. So um, 
instead of trying to memorize like all these packages and like what are all the different options, you can just come here, find something that you kind of like, right? Click on it. The problem is when, it's, when you click for, fairly far down, it's hard to remember which is the one you click, but like now this gives you the actual uh, package that you can use. Um, and so in this case, it's like GG Sci, right? Um, so that's one great of, one great way of browsing palettes. Um, and the palette, the VR color palettes repository um, 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 it will scroll further down. Um, uh, it will talk about like color blindness um, and um, um, uh, and it talks about the um, big um, dichromat package we you can use to simulate color blindness. Um, but it also then talks about uh, color colorblind R. And um, as I was pre preparing this, um, um, I noticed that on the excessive vis uh, repository, <laughs> sorry, not repository, um, Slack channel, I, I shared this tweet in August 2020 about the colorblind package um, by Klaus Wilk. Um, so I guess I didn't remember that I had already seen it um, around. <laughs> Um, and so if we look at this colorblind package, right? Colorblind R package. Um, um, it makes it easy for you to have like a, a ggplot2 uh, plot. Uh, you save it as an object. And once you have it as an object, you can use this uh, CVD greet function, pass it your object, and it's gonna simulate the, um, the different, uh, the three most common like color blindnesses. And then also simulate how the colors look if you print them in black and white, right? Um, uh, and so uh, these default colors uh, from ggplot2, uh, you can actually differentiate them, right? Um, 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 uh, but like maybe you want to choose, you know, check what what are your other colors how they look, right? Um, so I thought that was quite uh, useful, um, um, like very easy, to, like just one single function to use, right? Um, and so this led me to, I needed to make a plot like this about, um, you won't be able to see this. I was working with some spatial data um, where we have here a few different categories and I needed to choose some colors. Um, um, and there's actually like uh, some uh, three different pairs um, and then like one background color. So I needed to choose some colors that, uh, um, that to represent this data. Um, uh, so I played around with like some of the I mean, me and uh, Samia, Sanko, um, and also Kristen played around with like a few different of the Palettier palettes. And then I ended up choosing colors from a, a few different Palettier palettes. Um, 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 and then um, I wanted, I used that colorblind R package to simulate the, uh, to simulate how it would look, right? Um, and so here I thought like, okay, uh, you can actually see the differences. Um, um, it also takes a little bit of the advantage of how things are specially laid out, right? Um, the non and next to PT colors are kind of hard to, to distinguish globally, but like um, um, if I zoom in more, then you, you can actually see the differences between the two. 
um, shades of, of um, like light blue or gray um, at that point. Um, um, so I was like, okay, you can actually see things. Uh, so other color uh, options I had chosen, he <laughs> couldn't see, <laughs> couldn't distinguish a lot of the, the colors. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe I need to choose a different set here. Um, like, um, and so you can, this is an example of where you can try to provide something that is more accessible for everyone as a default option, even though like the idea is that will well, we'll provide like ways where you can interactively choose colors later on. Uh, but like uh, on a paper, you can only really have like a static version. Um, uh, most of the time, most of the times, there's some journals now that allow you to have interactive plots. Um, um, so like, okay, anyway, this seems like it works, right? Um, um, you can dis distinguish things. So I was pretty happy with, with this. Um, 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 and it was made easy because of that colorblind R package. Um, but then also by looking at different um, palettes with the palette uh, from this interactive website, uh, which let me add a, a direct link to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I already had it, sorry. Um, and so when I mentioned some of this uh, on a meeting um, yesterday, um, a few of you mentioned the uh, there's already cell phone apps or websites where you can upload a plot. Uh, if we're talking about a website uh, or a cell phone app that can simulate the different like uh, 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 color vision impairments. Um, 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 so, I mean, you could also use that. Uh, uh, like Google in Iran, I found this like chromatic version, chromatic vision simulator. Um, app. Um, I haven't used it myself, so I don't know if it's how good it is or not. Um, but these are different ways of finding all these colors. And so there's a lot, there's potentially like a lot more than what I've mentioned today, right? Um, um, and I think um, we can all try to do a little bit better in terms of colors, right? Um, uh, we do have uh, colleagues that are have color vision impairments. Um, um, and I think it's probably like maybe a bit uh, exhausted trying to remind people like, hey, I can't really see this color, right? Mm -hmm. Like meeting after meeting type of thing. Um, so sometimes they, they maybe they give up a bit. Um, um, and I can relate to that in, in the sense of like, uh, like for me, it's like, when they talk about like Latinos and like um, why well, there's not that many Latinos in science, et cetera, right? Um, it can become a little bit tiring to like always, it feels like an extra burden type of thing to talk about that, right? Um, um, and, and sometimes you can feel like maybe it's not fair that you have to be the one defending this, right? Um, so, um, 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 yeah, I like to be a bit more uh, supportive of people that have visual impairments. Um, at times, though, it, be, it can be a bit challenging because, um, uh, like, maybe you still need to choose colors that um, you can you can see on top of a background image, um, and that is a situation we have with spatial, um, where like you're maybe talking about like too many different colors. Um, and um, yeah, that's still like a bit of a challenging situation at times. Um, oh, um, 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 I don't know if people have questions um, about all these color um, options. And I guess if, if someone wanted to present this paper from 2009, right? Going to more detail about it, that could be great, right? Um, um, if you're interested in it, there might be other papers, more recent ones, right? Um, but um, 
I mean, you can see how this paper is implemented in the color space package. Color space is mentioned by like Polychrome, um, and Polychrome is used by Palantir, right? So it, it all it's all part of a building block. Uh, and sorry, that reminds me, po Polychrome. How, while I was looking for all the links for today, I realized that they have a vignette on color deficits. So they also have functions. Um, this color deficit function that simulates um, the different color deficits. So here you can like take your colors and simulate how they look, right? Um, which is a bit different from the colorblind R approach, which just shows you exactly your same plot, but now with the different visual impairments, right? Um, so you, could, you can potentially use this if you wanted to, right? To check whether your color palette, um, uh, you know, how it looks across the different, uh, um, visual, visual impairments, right? Um, um, oh, um, actually here, like, I guess a create palette function from Polychrome allows you to create color palettes targeting specific, um, um, specific, uh, visual impairments, right? Um, so I don't know, there's a lot of people have made a lot of different tools, right? Um, and sometimes it's a bit of, it's just going a little bit beyond the default, right? A little bit of extra um, effort from our side that can maybe have a big, big impact in, the, in other people, right? Um, cool. Um, yeah, so I think there's, I don't think there are any questions, right? Um, so with that, I'm going to stop the recording. Mm -hmm.